That's all you can do is that if you're not fishing on Saturday, you can't win. And here I am, so all I got beats four guys. I like my odds. We're on Lake St. Clair, Detroit, Michigan. It's the Forest Wood Open on the Walmart FLW Tour, a $1 million tournament. And this is one that all the anglers point to, not just because of the $200,000 first prize, but because of this place. It's one of the most tremendous smallmouth fisheries in the world. Cool, clear water, and as you can see, plenty of it to fish. Now, last time around, it was Peter Dolveros with some last-second heroics to take the win. And except for one this time around, we got a brand-new cast of characters in the final five. Jerry McInnes is down there watching them get underway. Tommy, we are in a little neighborhood just on the other side of Metro Park. Our boats are coming up the canal here. They probably got five more minutes to go when they're out in the big lake. And the, the lineup change that you talked about, the lineup change from two years ago up till today, consists of number one, Steve Daniels, who has an opportunity to win his fourth title here. That would tie him with David Fritz. We have two Georgia fishermen, Mickey Bruce and Jimmy Millsap. And we have one young fisherman who's competed well all week long, well, well enough to be here on the final day. And he's done it all on a broken leg. We'll find out all about that. And the one fisherman who was in this same position two years ago when we were here, a name that all bass fishermen know, Larry Nixon. Uh, Larry's from the most favorite town in the world for me, Bee Branch, Arkansas. We're gonna have a smallmouth fest here today. There's a doggone good chance that all five of these boats will fish all day long and never boat a largemouth bass. We'll see. Well, who knows, Jerry, but one thing's for sure, we're gonna see them all get caught today. Stick around for this one. It's one of the biggest tournaments of the year, the Forest Wood Open. moving kind of slow but catching them really fast early on here in this tournament very near metro beach that's the launch point for this tournament here it's actually situated on a spot that's very popular with the smallmouth fishermen here on st Clair. they say it's where the spawning fish from the bay just to the south start moving up the lake when they really get going after the spawn and he has figured them out right here at least for the moment tommy sanders with the best view of anybody but uh could not see and still can't tell us the full story of this David Dudley and his Stay broken leg. On. We've got to revisit that a little bit later on. We're over on Jimmy Millsaps now, who is having an equally good start. Hey, you know what? Some of these guys, I think Jimmy being one of them, haven't even fished topwater baits all week long. Uh, not during the qualifying days, not Friday. And here he is starting the morning off with a topwater bait and a good start for him. Not a bad start with <laughs> Now then, we're going to move over to Larry Nixon. And I hope we get a lot of time to talk about Larry Nixon today because he is a... Uh, well, he could be the best that there's ever been, I guess. What a class act Larry Nixon is. He has won everything except an FLW event, and I know how badly he wants it. Uh, he's been close before. He should be the man up here because he has won a big event uh, on St. Clair before. He was in the top five here the last time around, and... Boy, he had that look in his eye. I think he can. I think he can do it. And boy, he has a good start. Also throwing a topwater bait. How about that? Hey, we are gonna switch over to Sanders again, who is following Steve Daniels down the skyline of Detroit. This is some shot. Hey, Steve, looks like a pretty nice ride this morning. Picking up a little extra fishing time today, it looks like. Yeah, it's gonna, I'm going to have a good five hours. That'll give me two hours to get back. And uh, 
I got to leave. I know the boat traffic is going to be really, really bad in this river, and uh, I can't beat my fish up too bad. I got to make sure they're all real alive when I get in. Can't, can't take no penalty today. Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm approaching Detroit. I got Detroit on my right, and uh, Windsor on the left over here, where that big casino is. And, man, this is a gorgeous place. Steve, we know you've been coming down here pretty much all week, and you expressed to me that it's been no problem getting a good limit, a 15-pound plus limit, on a spinnerbait all week. Uh, I know things have changed a little bit, but is that a possibility today? Yeah, I love my chances down here. I've, I've caught a lot of fish all week. It's a lot of, you know, just catching a lot of numbers, a lot of keepers, and uh, my first spot, I'm, I'm going to pull in there, and hopefully I can catch five right there, and uh, then I've got a big fish spot. I'm just going to alternate between the two spots all day, and. Uh, if I can catch 30, 40 keepers, five of them will be pretty good. And, uh, you know, my goal is 15 pounds. And uh, if I get that, as soon as I get 15, 16 pounds, I'm coming back. All right, that sounds good. Good luck to you, Steve. Well, a little bit less fishing time for Steve Daniels because of his long trip, but he has proved in the past that he is a winner. David Fritz has won four FLW Tour events. Steve Daniels is just one behind. Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Walmart. Always low prices, always. By Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. By Minn Kota. Anywhere, anytime. And by Mercury. The water calls. It's the 2001 Forest Wood Open. Here we are in Detroit, Michigan. One of the most anticipated tournaments of the year. Here's Mickey Bruce. I believe it's a... Uh, uh... I'm not sure the name of this river that Metro Park is in. It comes out and the flow of the river comes out and hits the current of the lake and turns and comes down through here. And we're, we're real close to the edge of that mud line. And they really do associate, associate themselves with that food source and the cover of that mud line, along with the grass on this drop. I'm, Trying to keep the boat, the ledge is, goes about three and a half to four and a half is a is a most severe drop in it and it just tapers off. There's a fish. That might be a keeper. I don't know. Let's see if that's a keeper for Mickey Bruce. We'll He's see. fishing just a little bit west of where we saw David Dudley already himself. catching fish one after Close the other. And, and St. Clair is nothing but a huge flat lake, Tommy. I mean, nothing really spectacular about it. I think we get over in Canada. I don't think so. You start running into more rocks and more contour, but these guys out here are fishing grass for the well, most part. They're, they're try trying to, to find little. Uh, uh, well, any kind of a rock Bye. is a major deal. Hey, did gloves. you hear Larry Nixon talking about fishing around a lawn chair? A lawn chair, a man. A sunken lawn chair. They'll take anything. So You, you yeah. mentioned Canada. Of course, we should point out Canada's closed. Clo Season's yeah. closed there, so they have to fish on so the American side. So they have to fish side. on this side. Here's Larry Nixon. I don't know if he's on his chair right now. I don't right believe now. he's on the lawn chair <laughs> pattern <laughs> right now. But <laughs> in fact, he's fishing a topwater bait right here. But as you know, Larry loves to fish structure. He loves to find structure, you know? He, he, like he always says, I like to fish things that aren't very visual. Um, and that's the toughest thing the for a fisherman to do. And maybe that's the reason why he's one of the best. However, Tommy, he's throwing a Zara spook right now. That's pretty visual. That is pretty visual. <laughs> we should point out, he's across the lake. He's on the east side of the lake from where Dudley and Bruce are fishing there. And it's a place called the Twin Lights, where a river and another creek run in. So there are some ditches and mud lines and the things he's looking for. He had a spot on that lake uh, that was, was his honey hole a couple years ago. And I think that everybody kind of beat it up pretty bad. Oh, yes. So he had to go out and find him some new spots, and he can do it, too, though. You can just, no, 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 no. You believe these guys when they say they haven't been fishing top waters, and all of a sudden they're fishing oh, them today yes. when we're looking? Well, I don't oh, know. Go, uh, dandy. Maybe, maybe they're just trying it, you know. Just I'll try this for a little while and see if it works, and it does work, and, and this is a real bonus for them. That's a good one there, Neil. That'll get you fired up. need to catch them as quick as I can because what's going to happen is going to be a lot of boat traffic here and they're going to chop all that grass up and it's going to be hard to fish this area. 
The bait's gonna really get fouled up with that floating stuff, and it's gonna make it difficult. Yeah, it's not only going to affect Steve Daniel, just around the corner from where Larry Nixon was fishing, the biggest party of the year on Lake St. Clair over there in Gull Island. Thousands of boats, yeah. and you know what, Tommy? This is a mental thing. The, the guys that can just cloud that cloud that out, not pay any attention to it, realize that it's a part of the event, and uh, continue to catch fish. They're the ones that'll do well. I don't think that's 14 inches. If I've got him at the end of the day, I'm not going to have much anyway, but... I am not going to throw one back if he's a keeper. I spent a little time up in the helicopter watching this guy, David Dudley, and we could tell there was something going on. We saw him catch three keepers one after the other. And, and he has been fishing top water. We, we, we like said some of the other guys were just starting yes. top water fishing this morning. I think David Dudley has been doing it all week long. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> oh, look at this. Just see him hobbling around this boat is a, is a riot. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. There he is. Oh, buddy. Oh, yes, son. Oh, thank you. Oh, I think this is a big one, son. I hope, I hope it is. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Come on, baby. You don't don't take that bad advantage of me. I'm a crip. That's pretty mean of you to do me like that. Make me walk all the way around the boat. Oh yes. Oh yes, baby. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Holy cow. Don't do this to a crip. That is not nice. Baby, that is, that is cool. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're awesome. Oh, yes, baby, yes. I'm not mad. I'm not that mad at you now for taking advantage of a crip. You're still my buddy. And I hope you get to ride to the way in, which you probably will as big as you are. 635 in the limit. Yes, that's a way to start off a $200,000 tournament. Woo, baby. Well, say it is David Dudley from Manteo, North Carolina. Oh, you know, yes, the largest so weight so far, single stringer weight this week, has been 16 pounds and 9 ounces. He's already got 12 pounds at 630 in the morning. I mean, anyone's guessed what's going to happen next, but you figure he's going to upgrade, and he's got a great shot at winning that $200,000 first prize. Michigan's Lake St. Clair and the Forest Wood Open. Here we are by the numbers over the first two days of this tournament. 2,192 keeper fish caught, 367 of them large men. Did that, that surprise you? Uh -huh. No, it doesn't surprise me. I, uh, first of all, these guys go up there and try to catch smallmouth, I think. Everybody loves to catch smallmouth so much, so they really target smallmouth. But obviously there's more small mouth up there than large mouth so uh, so that's the reason those numbers are that way now um, Tommy I said uh, Larry Man. Nixon and Dudley were throwing his air spook I, I'm sure they were Stay I believe on, uh, Jimmy Millsaps is throwing a spitting image which is a uh, a walking lure it, it's a topwater bait it's some very similar to his air spook Jimmy from Canton Georgia second top 10 ever and now he's made it into the top five what a good tournament Come to do on. that. Hey, and you know what? Some of the best strings have been in the 15-pound class. Uh, well, you know, we've had some 20-pound uh, stringers. Too. I, I think a non-boater. One. Rick <laughs> Parnell. Grand total of one. Rick but, Parnell. But these guys have been doing very well with 15-pound stringers. It looks like they're going to approach that pretty easily. I need me about five of those. Might also need to send you an oxygen tank out there, Jimmy. <laughs> Everybody's huffing and puffing, aren't they? Although I think there's some helium in this guy's boat. <laughs> Listen to this guy when he catches a fish. Oh, yeah. I can use that one. Yes! Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Cold time, buddy. 638, and I'm calling. Oh, Lord.
Lord, you are awesome. <laughs> 638 and I'm culling. That is a pretty good position to be in. That's one happy fisherman, too. You 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 are going to tell us the broken leg story here. In We're gonna, it's a little embarrassing for him. We'll say that right <laughs> now. We will get to that. Now, what does Larry Nixon know about smallmouth bass? He, he did the bulk of his fishing on Toledo Bend oh, Reservoir. There hasn't been a smallmouth uh, on cow, what a Toledo Bend in many years. Be hooked, but, baby. Tommy, before he was at Toledo Bend, he was at Greer's Ferry Lake in Arkansas. And there's a few smallmouth there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And this one's real Lots fish. of smallmouth around in he the streams big. in that part of the country. So, you know he's fished for him. Yeah, we're going to give it to him. He's got some uh, smallmouth experience. Boy, he's got a dandy on right here. Still fishing that topwater lure. Now, all week, most of these anglers have been catching them on the tube lure. The fish stays hooked on a tube lure. That's not a given here when you cut these topwaters. They are sweating each fish. That's right. You know, we haven't seen a fish caught on a tube yet today. Can you believe that? I don't that? believe that at all. <laughs> and Azera Spook, of course, is a walking lure, a lure that you uh, fish with a little... By, by snapping the slack in your line back and forth and get it to really make a lot of noise. And a smallmouth, I've always found that a smallmouth bass yes. just can't stand that <laughs> racket on top of the water. And they will seem to come from a long way to hit a zero spook where at times they won't uh, jump on another, another style of uh, topwater bait. Thank you, Mr. Bass. Goodness. Got my heart beating. Three good keepers so far for Larry Nixon and all these guys getting a lot of work done here in the early morning hours before things get stirred up. Yeah, I, I know that they're very concerned about the boat traffic that will begin. To, hey, this is the first good weekend of the summer. You know, <clears throat> Saturday on on any body of water is going to be a, a busy day as far as the, the number of boats that's going to be on the water, but especially on this lake and, and especially this weekend. They, they're anticipating a, a tremendous amount of boats on the water. That's, I guess, the bad news. The good news is it's nothing new to these fish. They're, they've grown up in it, and, and they know, excuse me just a minute, they know that, that when uh, it comes this time of the year, there's a lot of boat traffic. It, it doesn't really affect the fish. It affects the fishermen more than the fish trying to cope with a, this is the one that I need right here. Tommy, I'm glad he said that. This is, um, it is still, in spite of how many fish you catch, this is still a mental game and the, the little problems like the boat traffic and one thing or another, the, the, the best guys I'm telling get you. rid of that. They don't, they don't they carry that around all day. They, they work on catching fish. Of energy. Well, this will be the third keeper if he can get it in the boat. There he goes. He's got, got it. chartreuse there spinner is. bait, oh. chartreuse blades as well. Boy, that, that's a big thing is that on this lake. a fish or what? Painted blades is my what they goodness. recommend to catch these, these big smallmouth bass on. And I can tell you from my experience, they work. Worked for Mickey Bruce. That is his third fish, six and a half pounds, three good keepers. Man, look at that David Dudley. Five fish, 13 pounds already. And Larry Nixon right behind him. Don't go anywhere. Lots more smallmouth catching to come. I believe I can get me two more big ones if I just stole this thing all day. The 2001 Forestwood Open here on Lake St. Clair, Detroit, Michigan. We are looking down on the boat of the guy who was really doing it today. David Dudley, already a limit. And the last time we talked to him, he's got more fish now. He's upgraded 14 and a half pounds. Big lead now over Larry Nix. And you know what? Wasn't it maybe two weeks ago or three weeks ago? We were talking about how when you catch a limit quick, you sometimes get complacent. Well, David Dudley's going to have to. Boy, it's come easy for him. Yeah, too he's easy. Gonna, he's going to have to fight that. Well, one way to fight it, think of two words, Larry Nixon. Larry Nixon, that, that'll do it. Big difference from yesterday. Yesterday, I... Yesterday I struggled to do to do what I did and and uh, so I decided today to go out practicing because I knew I couldn't win with what I had going. So I decided to go and practice a little different area. And as I was going out across here this morning, uh, I noticed the fish feeding on mayflies here in one particular area, like right through here. I mean, I kept on seeing a bunch of them just right in one area. And uh, 
whenever you see that, most of the time that means that there's a there's a little sweet spot, you know, something that they're keying on over one area. As you can see, you got a big, massive, huge flat. But all the fish relate to to one particular area on this flat. Hopefully, I can keep doing what I'm doing, and I might, might have a chance to win this sucker. But I don't think this one's gonna help me. He's a keeper, though. Nice, good keeper. Many times I wish I would've had these in the tournament. Just that size right there. But this tournament, buddy, you ain't gonna do me no good. I'm seeing a little bit of variety in That's our lures, I guess, fish. Jerry. Uh, Mickey Bruce here, he's been using the spinner bait, you know, the fluke there for David Dudley, which is they sort of like a topwater lure, which like Nixon's catching on. But still nothing uh, yeah. caught on the tube yet. I no, can't believe it. Crazy? I mean, these guys have been whaling these fish all week all day, along yes, on catch. tubes. Uh, but the bigger fish are caught on topwater baits and on that spinner bait. And, and Tommy, let's watch this. Uh, uh, this is Millsap's topwater, right? Mil here. This is a spitting image. You can see that this is a walking lure. He's uh, snapping his rod tip to make it walk back and forth, and a smallmouth bass can't stand that. I told you that before, <laughs> they just can't stand that. I really do think that the water, uh, the, the noise on top of that water really does attract the smallmouth. And let's face it, there are lots of fish up here, so they obviously gotta be very competitive. If I win this tournament, this next hole's gotta pay off today. A little bit slow out there yesterday, but... You never know what you're gonna get when you get out and go out here. Hard to believe Steve Daniels has not qualified for the Tour Championship. But I'll tell you what, a guy who's working hard to qualify for the $200,000 championship here is David Dudley, and we've seen precious little of that today. He's already got five fish, 14 and a half pounds. There's lots more time and lots of folks who can catch it. Don't go away. Walmart FLW Tour brought to you by Fujifilm. Get the picture. By Conseco, meeting America's financial needs. By B.F. Goodrich, take control. And by Sitco, we know you. The forest would open on Lake St. Clair in Michigan. David Dudley is still our leader with 14 and a half pounds. That's the topwater lure of Larry Nixon. But this is going to be the last go round for this topwater. Well, I'm going to make another pass. That gummy. And I'm going to do it with my tube this time. Try to get me one more right quick. Larry Nixon did try the tube. Of course, that's how he'd been catching them all week long. Oh, a little big, bit later, he switched one. to another that soft gun. plastic lure, a fluke. And that's when things started to get hot. Come and on the, the topwater fishing is probably over for the day, for nah, at least for Larry anyway. And, and a, 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 a tube well, will probably it. fish down as big deep as 10 or 12 day. foot of water. The, the oh, fluke is kind of an in-betweener, oh, I guess. Uh, it, it, he's going to fish it very near the surface, and it's almost like a Zerospook in that it walks, but it uh, as, as you jerk it back and forth, Let's but it's in it two or three feet of water probably. And, uh, boy, there's been a lot of fish caught on flukes as, as well as the, the tubes. So I bet you the, the top water fishing is getting close to being over with. You know, he's caught those three good keepers on the top water. Most folks would say, why in the world would you stop doing it? But that's what makes Nixon great and has made him great through the years, knowing when to, when to switch over, when to make changes. All these guys are so great at knowing when right. to make changes. Whew. He's made the changes, putting on a clinic for us right now. Larry Nixon, one of the winningest bass anglers of all time, definitely qualifies for what you might call legendary status. Man, those changes have made the difference. Now he's in the lead. Five fish, 15 pounds, a half pound advantage over David Dudley. I got a big fish spot. If I can get, if I can get a pretty good limit and go sit on it all day, I've been getting like one or two bites, but they've been four and a half and five pounders. So I'm hoping I can do pretty good before this traffic picks up. Then. Uh, Man, 
man, he was just a kid. I don't know if he'd have kept or not. Steve Daniels told us on his way out this morning, the thing he was worried about was the boat traffic, not only for the debris the boats kick up, but he needs a, a smooth ride to get back, keep his fish alive, but he's got to get some more fish right now. I'm real surprised that uh, Steve has not made a move yet. Of course, there's still plenty of time, and he's got two places down there that he's really counting on. So, You're uh, right. He'll be there. Mickey Bruce is going to be there, too, isn't he? Oh, absolutely. He's caught some good ones today. Man, I should I say. And he's still fish fishing right that there, spinnerbait, yeah. I bet. Uh, and again, I want to say that that not only are they, they using a chartreuse uh, uh, body, but the blades, according to everyone up there, need to be chartreuse as well. So they, they are using painted blades. Um, hey, why would that make a difference? Well, I mean, versus just, a, a flashy golden or silver blade. So, sometimes I'm, I, I really wonder if that, again, is, isn't a little bit mental. You know, it, they, they think you have to have that. And so you use it a lot. And so a lot of the fish are caught that way. You know, just one thing feeds on it. Look at this fish here. Oh, 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 I'll throw a, a, a painted blade, too, that, wouldn't you? Hey, if, I, if that's mental, I'll take it. For. How about those fluttering bait? Look at that. That's a perfect specimen. I'm telling you. I tell you, one of, the, one of the first things I asked about next year's schedule, the first thing is, are we coming to St. Clair? And that's why. That was a big fish, and it's made a big difference as well. Now look at Mickey Bruce, five fish, 15 pounds, tied for the lead with Larry Nixon. Steve Daniels oh, continues to labor here. He needs to catch some big ones now. And, Tommy, do you think these, uh, we, we were talking about mental stuff, and we were also talking about slacking off after you catch a, a limited fish. Do you think some of these guys that are up around the 15-pound class think that maybe they're in the driver's seat? And Well, how could they not? They, as we mentioned earlier, 16-9 was, uh, was the biggest, the biggest yet. stringer among professionals for the week. I, I bet anything. They went out in the morning thinking, I have to catch 15 pounds to win this, or 16 pounds to win it. So uh, they, may, they may mess around and not. Yeah, realize that everybody's doing good. You're Maybe really old Steve that. Daniels is finally kicking it in, too. He could be. You know, add to that the fact that, well, you know, the fishing wasn't as good yesterday, so maybe think 15 pounds is good enough to win. Here's the reality of it. Right now, our leaderboard, Mickey Bruce, our leader with 15 pounds, 15 ounces, tied with Larry Nixon. David Dudley, though, just behind. This is a great race. Well, it's been, <laughs> been a mighty good morning so far, fishing-wise. You know, you just start out early in the morning and do the things that's normal in uh, May and June. I throw you a topwater bait for a couple of hours and hope you get three or four and five. And I mean, when you're on a lake like St. Clair, you just got to get in an area where there's a lot of bass. I mean, there, there's just a lot of smallmouth in certain areas. And when you get in one of them good areas, you just got to change patterns, uh, throw different baits with the with the changing of the day, the time of the day, and stay where the fish are and if something don't mess you up you're going to catch fish i can't think of better advice that, that anyone that who wants to be a tournament fisherman could take well, than that right they, there wasn't that great you, you and i tommy can sit here and talk all day long we can't say it any better than larry nixon said it Maybe right there he's bigger than i think he is mickey bruce is uh still out in that open water and folks you, you to have to realize that we are looking at open water but there is grass there's little Bad little news is uh, uh, points in the grass, potholes in the grass. There's there's different things out there that these guys are fishing in. They're not just oh, well. thrown out there in the blue. Hey, look how calm he is. Isn't that a sorry state of affairs when you got a three pound <laughs> smallmouth on? You think it's not going to help you, so you're just kind of blase uh, about it. Mickey's just wondering whether this little fish will even help him. Isn't that, <laughs> yeah, a, isn't that oh, sad? He needs Dog to be gone. slapped, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey caught what I think was the biggest fish there um, um, a little bit ago, I believe. Uh, and all these guys have really caught some some outstanding fish. We, and, you know, we're Tommy, we're starting to take it for granted, I believe. Yeah, these are outstanding fish. These are career smallmouth bass. Every time. Don't you do that spinnerbait? I bet anything that David Dudley is going to laugh here in a minute. And Tommy, tell me the broken leg story. Okay, he looks youthful enough, but David Dudley is too old for skateboards, and that <laughs> is how he broke his leg trying out. I, I guess it was a, a young friend's or nephew's skateboard. So isn't that embarrassing? It's a little embarrassing. <laughs> I told you he'd laugh. Oh, yeah, baby. That's a three.
three-pounder right there, buddy. Juice! A little hyper, I'd say. <laughs> hey, Millsap's in the ball game, isn't hey, he? He was never out of it. Uh, I mean, that he's is right. Back there. Uh, of course, in in this situation, everybody out there that is throwing is in it. But uh, uh, Jimmy Millsap's having a good day. Another look at David Dudley. He's just relentless. He is not quitting. He's not becoming complacent. Well, that's a picking. That is a picking. That is a good one. Come on, man, you always take, don't take advantage of this crip. Get in here, big boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I'll be able to cool with him. I think. Oh, yes, baby. Yes, baby. Larry Nixon with perhaps a look at a different spot here. Decided to be a good opportunity to try out the old uh, topwater lure one more time today. Beautiful, peaceful scene right there. <laughs> I can just, hear it coming in the background. Oh, isn't that awful? Look at that. What a... This is what I'm afraid of right here. Traffic. Forestwood Open is here on Lake St. Clair, Detroit, Michigan. Of course, one of the largest metro areas in the country. This beautiful lake right next door. Of course, you're going to have a whole lot of boat traffic here. It's the Motor City, not just for automobiles, but for boats as well. Anytime you're on Lake St. Clair on a Saturday, there's going to be a tremendous amount of pleasure boats out there. And it's going to be a real difficult day of fishing. And you need to do things right pretty early in the morning because, uh, you know, after about 11 to 12 o'clock, it really gets nasty out there. And if you're in any of the heavy route areas, you're just, you're just in trouble. That, my water's getting a lot muddier. I need it to be cleaner. We know coming in that the weekend is bad, so you, you plan. If you think you're going to make it to Saturday, you've got to deal with it. I can't really see where I'm throwing. I believe it'll affect the fishermen more than it will the fish. They're used to it. It's just going to be aggravating about moving around and, and, and actually standing up and fishing for the boat weights. I'm going to try not to let it bother me because the fish are used to they're also used to the boat traffic, so it's not like the fish are sitting there saying, oh my gosh, look at all these boats. They're used to it just like anything else. It doesn't really affect the fish. It affects the fishermen more than the fish. It messes with your mind because uh, they see all the traffic, they think it's messing with the fish, and really it stirs up the bait. And when the bait's stirred up, you know, you got a better shot at catching you find this one little honey hole where they're fighting over a lure, I don't care how many of them things is going by you, they'll bite. I think his boat traffic's finally messing me up. Well, that's it right there. That's what they've got to deal with it, but they've all got to deal with it, so it's fair. They know that they are the visitors. They are on other people's waters. However, kind of kind of watching some of these boats, I think maybe, maybe they could be a little bit courteous. They're making it awful tough. This one feels good. But I don't know that he is. Yes, he is, too. Oh, golly. He's a good one. He'll get rid of that little peck of wood. Look at him with him down there. Look at the fish with him. Golly, there must be 25 with him. I'm going to tell you something. These are chunks. They're not skinnies. They're my good ones. <laughs> Boy, I don't know. I hate culling big old fish like that. Nice trade, Larry. 
Well, that was a good trade. Mm -hmm. That's giving the trade him, you want right giving there. Giving himself a pep talk, Tommy. And just because he's my neighbor doesn't mean that I'm pulling for him. Oh, no, you know, you're totally impartial. <laughs> we know how that goes. <laughs> well, Jimmy Millsap is, is right on the edge as well. We've got four guys. Steve Daniels Back up my raw. struggling still a little bit, but we got four guys that can win this fishing trip. Like Jimmy's changed his spot a little bit. And it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, <laughs> How do you know that? Well, I don't see the little lighthouse, you know, Larry. You're right. Larry's you're in that right. area, but maybe he is. I just not don't have the right angle. Well, he's he's still catching some quality smallmouth. Oh, all right. That's going to help me right there. Man. That's kind of been catching over here. Oh, right. Boy, it's a good decision to come back over here. This might be good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, this is the one I need right here. Yes! That's what I'm talking about, baby! Woo! That's what I'm talking about! Woo! Yeah, baby! Two of my brothers, the guy I travel with, and my girlfriend right there. And may have sealed it for me right there. Dang, I want to win this tournament so bad, you just can't even imagine how bad I want to win this tournament. My daughter thinks I'm over the hill. <laughs> Daddy, you just can't catch fish like you used to. <laughs> Golly, bumming, he is a big one. Walmart FLW Tour. Forestwood open here on Lake St. Clair. We are getting into the waning hours right now. Jimmy Millsaps is our leader. 17 pounds right behind him. Within a half a pound, David Dudley and this man right here, Larry Nixon. Look at that toad. God. That'll call something. I think. He is skinny, though. Shoot. Mickey Bruce right here, and Mickey just a pound and a half behind our leader, Jimmy Millsap. But uh, Mickey may have gotten an eyeball on the fish that could put him in the lead. Look at this was earlier with a fluke. Take a look at that. Boy, what a big smallmouth. Man, oh, man. That was the one. Did you see that? Yeah. And, and the thing to do up here, Tommy, is when you see a fish, is do what Mickey is doing right here, and that's possibly pick up something different. Now he threw a tube out on the, on the fish that wow. kind of turned down his fluke. He wow, threw a tube out there on him and caught him. Uh, this is the thing about the, the, the fish up here on, in these waters. Size, I, again, I think there's so many fish that they're so doggone competitive that you throw back at them that they that they will hit it again, and then and then sometimes you have to wonder, well, maybe that was another fish, <laughs> maybe it wasn't even the same one. One of our anglers told this incredible story. Practice fishing up here, he caught a fish on a tube. He came, brought the fish in. There was another one following him. He dropped that another tube back in there to catch the other one, and the same fish that was already hooked grabbed that H hit tube it. as well. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. Aggressive fish. And today we have big aggressive fish. You know what? These fish seem to be, Tommy, you know you were out there. They seem to be bigger than they were on the qualifying day. Absolutely. And, and every one of them seems to be. A pretty big. one. Oh, that pumps me up. There he is. Oh, that's a good one. I think I got a good one. Oh my gosh. 
man, come on. Don't, don't do this to a crip. Don't do this to a crip. Don't do this to a crip. Come on, baby. Just stay, stay buckled, buddy. Because I want to do some investing with Conseco if I win this dirty. <laughs> I know you're right here. Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh man, that's a fat pig right there. Man is a born performer, I'm telling That's you. That's it, Tommy. I'm out of here. <laughs> now, here's our proven performer, Larry Nixon. That sun is high in the sky. We are in the Be waning hours of this cone. tournament. And look at these guys. They're relentless. Uh, big pike or nothing stupid. Oh, here he comes. Gosh! Oh, man, what a bass. Gosh! <laughs> what a fishing day. Gee, many Christmas. And I ain't sure he'll help me. I'm not sure he won't either. Could that be the fish that wins it for Larry Nixon right there? Who Boy, I'm not bass? sure, Tommy, but you know what? I bet you there are four guys right. headed to the weigh-in who think they have won this event. And I don't think I could disagree with any one of them, but we're about to find out who's going to be the winner at the Forest Wood Open. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Black & Decker, proud sponsor of the Walmart FLW Tour. By Eagle Electronics, successful fishing made simple. By Land O'Lakes, supporting family traditions. And by Kellogg's, the best to you each morning. You guessed it, we had a close weigh-in. Nixon has 18 pounds, two ounces. And Jimmy Millsap is the only one left who could beat him. Detroit, Michigan, Lake St. Clair, the one million dollar forest would open. That means two hundred thousand dollars to the winner here. Two anglers left. Larry Nixon, a limit of fish, eighteen pounds, two ounces. One man left who can catch him. Jimmy Millsaps, Canton, Georgia, needs a great fish. Needs four pounds, eleven ounces. Larry, step on up. We're going to get everybody good and close here. Jimmy, let's see that last one. You're right where you need to be. I'm right where I need to be right now. <laughs> Larry, top five, 1999, right here on Lake St. Clair. Had a great deal going then. Peter Thilveros with some last minute heroics. Pull that one out for sure. We're just gonna come up and see what happens this time around with Jimmy Millsaps, his first top five ever on the Walmart FLW Tour. Looking to score big. Oh, we're looking He's for four pounds. Limits. 411 to That's win. What we need. Uh, this fish weighs. Three pounds, seven ounces. The title goes to Larry Nixon. How about that? Congratulations, sir. Thanks, Tommy. <laughs> Great day. A long wait. Long wait. 
two years on this one anyway, and boy, what a, what a good one to win. What a good one to win. Wow, one of the most amazing days fishing I've ever had. Didn't expect these, this many pounds, did you? Well, I knew I could do it if everything worked out just right. And I made a big change in the way I'd been fishing all week. I, I, you know, I just totally swapped around and started out in some water that I'd been going to a little bit later in the day. And uh, boy, I went through a lure selection like a pro. <laughs> <laughs> Quick and efficient, huh? Yes, I did. Um, I caught three real big ones this morning on top water, and uh, then I lost one. And uh, they quit me, and I, I throwed it for about another 30 minutes, you know, and I said, uh-oh, I think I know what to do. And I grabbed a soft plastic jerk bait and uh, started pitching it and, and twitching it and letting it fall just out of sight. And, you know, I saw one come up behind it, and I said, whoa. And I stopped it, and he just eat it. He was a big one. I'm going to remember every one of them. It was just, uh, it was just one of them incredible days and uh, I lost a good friend two weeks ago and I feel like this one's for him and uh, I want to thank all you folks for supporting me you're you're unreal you're not from Arkansas but you're great well Nixon gets the win but David Dudley gets the Fuji flashback what a dance Say a quick word of thanks to everyone in Warren, as Kelvin mentioned, has been great here. Mayor Mark Steinberg has done everything he could possibly do to make this a great tournament. How about our champion here, Larry Nixon? Hi to the Nixon folks back at the Walmart and everyone else at Walmarts across the country. We'll see you next time at our championship on Lake Champlain. Don't, don't do this to a This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Nice trade, Larry.